Other judgment we learned last night in Deuteronomy 28 as we move to Deuteronomy 29. These are the words of the covenant which the Lord commanded Moses to make with the children of Israel in the land of Moab. They're on the other side of the Jordan River. They have not gone in yet. Besides the covenant which he made with them in Horeb. That's way back in Exodus 20. So God makes two covenants with them. And the ones he makes in Horeb, the, the elders, the grandparents, the father, they're died off. The ones that are going to go into the land, here we are in Moab, and God makes a covenant with them, and we're reviewing the law, and we see more laws. You say, well, when I study Deuteronomy, there's a lot more than there was in Leviticus. Because they're going in the land now. They're not going to be wandering. And Moses called unto Israel and said unto them, Ye have seen all that the Lord did before your eyes in the land of Egypt unto Pharaoh. So even though the generation have died off in the wilderness, and those children that were under 20, they were also the ones that were in Egypt. And unto all his servants, and unto all his land. Great temptations, which thy eyes have seen. The signs, and those great miracles, the frogs, the lice, the darkness. Yet the Lord has not given you an heart to perceive, and eyes to see, and ears to hear unto this day. And even in the time of Jesus, you have ears to hear, but you won't hear. You don't understand. You have eyes to see, and yet you don't see nothing. And that's a spiritual condition that is very severe. Because whenever you do a public ministry, you are dealing with people, they can't see it. They won't see it. They don't want to see it. They don't want to turn to God. They love their darkness. They think their religion is just fine. They think you're an idiot. And God has proclaimed to you, go in all the world and preach the gospel, but you're not going to make them. You're not going to change them. That's the work of the Holy Spirit. And there are many that will go to Broadway. And yet here we see there are children of Israel. They're about to go in the land, and yet they still don't understand or have the knowledge. And I have led you 40 years in the wilderness. Now watch this one. If this is not a miracle and a sign, your clothes are not waxing old upon you. Their clothes didn't rot. They didn't give out. They didn't uh, get holes in them. They didn't die out. The clothes that they came wearing from the night of the Passover are the same clothes they are wearing now. Over 40 years. And thy shoe is not waxing old upon thy foot. Look at that. 40 years. And they wore sandal kind of shoes that they're not as sophisticated as they are made today. And yet 40 years. And they're still wearing the same shoes. Surprised they haven't complained about that in the wilderness. Oh, I got the same shoes, got the same clothes. Ye have not eaten bread. They ate the manna. Neither have you drunk wine or strong drink. Look at that. No alcohol in the 40 years of the wilderness. How's that? Not even wine. No grape juice. That ye might know that I am the Lord your God. So, strong drink alcohol? <laughs> By what the verse says, you don't know who the Lord is. And when he came unto this place, Shion, the king of Heshbon, and Og, I don't know how many times that guy is mentioned, the king of Bashan came out against us unto battle, and we smoked them. And we took their land. And gave it for inheritance unto Reubenites and the Gadites and the half tribe of Manasseh. Wrong piece of land. We'll deal with them first. They'll be the first ones to go into captivity. Then Israel north and then Judah. 
Keep therefore the words of this covenant. No, oh, that's what we talked about last night. And do them. That's what we talked about last night. That ye may be pro that you may prosper in all that ye do. Well, that was the first verses up from chapter. I mean, from verse one down to fourteen of twenty-eight. Ye stand this day, all of you, before the Lord your God, and your captains of your tribes, your elders, and your officers, with all the men of Israel, your little ones, your wives, and thy stranger. There's two Gentiles there. This is thy camp, from hewer of thy wood unto the drawer of thy water. Now that was those, I forget who they were, but that was, no, no that's, that's not it. That's Joshua. Well, the people that went out and gathered wood and gathered water. Those are, you know, the servants, the slaves, the daughters. Rebecca was getting water. That thou shouldest enter into the covenant with the Lord thy God and unto into his oath, which the Lord thy God maketh thee this day. So that covenant is an oath of God. That's God swearing. Now, many people think that God lies when they say God's all finished with Israel. No, 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 there's that covenant. He may be angry with them. Listen, you may have a child, and that child may go wayward. You, you've beaten that child. You, you've got the rod on that child, and that child thumbs and nose at you. That child doesn't want to have anything to do with you. It's still your child. There is no law. For a firstborn child that you can disinherit them. And Israel is called the firstborn of God. You just let them go. Pray for them. Verse 13. That he, God, may establish thee today for a people unto himself. And that he may be unto thee a God. As he has said unto thee. And as he has sworn unto thy fathers, to Abraham, to Isaac, to Jacob. See, why a God? Because God's going to know what they're going to do in the wilderness. And I mean, what they're going to do in the land. They're going to have multiple gods. They're going to get worse and worse and flee from God. And so God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob will be just a God to most of them. To many of them. But he's taking them. See how he's taking them to be the... In, own people and that's said about no other nation neither with you only do I make this covenant and this oath but with him that standeth here with us this day before the Lord our God and also with him that is not here with us this day Jews in the future well look at that for ye know how we have dwelt in the land of Egypt. You've been there, your witnesses. And how we came through the nations which ye passed by. Edomites, Moabites, Ammonites. They wouldn't help them. They wouldn't let them drink water. They wouldn't, wouldn't let them go by the highway. And ye have seen their abominations. Now what's an abomination? Adultery. No, they're idols, wood, stone, silver, gold. Those are abominations too, idolatry, which ye, which were among them. Their cities were given over to deities. Lest there should be among you, man or woman, no in between, or family, or tribe, Anybody that's Israel, whose heart turns away this day from the Lord our God, to go and serve the gods, small g o d s, of the nations, which they will do, lest there should be among you a root that bears gall and wormwood. That's bitterness. That's no taste. Vile. And it come to pass when he heareth the words of this curse. Oh, we got another curse. 27, 28, 29, we have curses. The God, the Bible says, 
Curses they that do not adhere to the word of God. And the world and the worldly Christian says, God hates the sin, but loves the sinner. Really? Are you going to tell me that God hates idolatry, but he loves the person that's bringing the idolatry in? We're going to see otherwise today, hopefully, Lord willing. And it comes to pass when he heareth the words of this curse. Oh, so we're reading a curse right now. And it started in verse 18. That he blessed himself in his heart. Oh, I'm so wonderful. I'm so great. Look how great I am. Pride. Saying, I have peace. Though I walk in an imagination of my heart. I'm okay. I'm all right. My religion is just as best as your religion. And to add drunkenness to thirst. Oh, he's a religion. He's getting drunk with his religion. That's kind of interesting. The Lord will not spare him the sinner. <laughs> How do you like that? God loves the sinner, but he hates the sin. What are you going to do when God says, I will not spare him? But then the anger of the Lord and his jealousy shall smoke, <laughs> smoke against that man. I don't explain how, why there's smoke unless God is just going to, poof, you're gone. And all the curses that are written in this book. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, if not just Deuteronomy itself. Didn't we read a lot of curses in chapter 28? And God said, if you make idolatry and you get drunk in your idolatry and you got pride in your idolatry, I will put all that on you and then I'll take your name out of the book of life. Wow. The Catholic Church is in trouble. And any religion that has idolatry. And that little cross that hangs off your neck. That's idolatry. Watch. And shall lie upon him, and the Lord shall blot out his name from under heaven. Now we're in the Old Testament. Now if you're saved, you cannot lose your salvation. But what do you do with that? What do you do when the book of Revelation says, when you change the words of, of this prophecy, the book of Revelation, I will remove your name from the book of life. You must not have been saved from the beginning. No true child of God will get involved with correcting the Bible. Scripture with scripture. And the Lord shall separate him unto evil out of all the tribes of Israel, According to all the curses, if you didn't get the first curse, curses of the covenant that are written in the book of the law. <laughs> and 28 last night was bad enough that we had to do part two. So that the generation to come, the future, of your children that shall rise up after you and the stranger that shall come from a far land shall say, when they see the plagues of the, that land and the sickness, Deuteronomy 29, which the Lord has laid upon them, Deuteronomy 29. This is how like God loves the sinner. You forgot John 3.16 is past tense. That love is at Calvary, and you cannot walk away from Calvary rejecting Jesus and expect God to love you. And that the whole land thereof is brimstone. That's not good. That's sulfur. And salt, you can't plant anything. And God said your ground will be, it won't have no rain. You won't be able to grow crops. And burning, a desert, that is not sown, no plants, nor beareth any fruit, nor any grass groweth therein. Cows will die. Deuteronomy 28, again, like the overthrow of Sodom and Gomorrah, they're wiped out, they're going to Duma and Zebulun. 
Oh! You mean there were more cities than just Sodom and Gomorrah? Which the Lord overthrew in his anger. You know how angry I'll get with you, Israel? Remember what? Remember the stories you heard? You, you see Sodom right now, what it is today? I'll get that angry with you. Sodom has never been built. Gomorrah has never been settled as a city ever since. Nor the, the area or the neighboring cities. Never has not. Which the Lord overthrew in his anger. Well, that's not today's God. And in his wrath. John the Baptist says, He that has the Son has everlasting life. He that has not the Son shall not see light, but the wrath of God abiding upon him. That's hell. That's how angry God gets when you reject his word. Even all nations shall say. Now this is what the nations are going to say about Israel. This is a heathen. Wherefore has the Lord done thus unto this land? Why is this land like it is? What meaneth the heat of this great anger? Wow, their God really got mad. It's not the God, you know, he, he, he hates the sin and loves the sinner. Then men shall say. <clears throat> so the question arises, why? What on earth happened? And there'll be answers. And let's see what the answer is. Because the answer is going to be answered to the question. It's not the answer of your worldly churches and Christians today. The truth is. They have forsaken the covenant of the Lord God of their fathers. They rejected the word of God. That's honest. Which he made with them. When he brought them forth out of the land of Egypt. Well, the, the heathen know what happened to Israel. They have not erased history. As the history is being erased today. So there may be a time in the future. What is this Jesus? What is this Bible? I don't know. We got rid of that. We don't want that. Here are the heathen the Gentiles, they know the history of Israel. You want to pull any hundred teenagers from Baptist churches in a Sunday school classroom of all 50 states of America? You want to pull any hundred of them and ask them about, just give us a, a very brief outline of the history of Israel. How far do you think you're going to get today? Out of a Baptist Sunday school. I didn't say from the public school system. Oh, we know about pirates. We know cute little songs and stories. But many of it don't come out of the Bible. I got turned away from a Sunday school teacher because I was too much in the Bible and the parents didn't like it. That I was actually sending the kids home with homework from Sunday school to be done next some to be done by next Sunday. Pastor came to me, talked to me, said, We can't have this. Fine. Now you're in a mess. I'm still serving the Lord. Verse 26 For they went and served other gods. That's what the church is doing today. Esther is another god. Easter is the famous name. And worship them. Oh, Santa, please, making a list and checking the title. I've been a good boy all year. What about Jesus? Eh, see him on Sunday. And worship them gods whom they knew not. New gods. In the lands where they're going to go. And whom he had not given unto them. God didn't have any other gods. God's one God. He did not authorize them to have other gods. Matter of fact, he's totally against it. And you go in your Baptist church today, you got a man who stands at the pulpit, and he becomes a god to the people. Right? You know? 
and the anger of the Lord. Not my God. My God doesn't get angry, does he? This is my God. My God that gets angry. The anger of the Lord was kindled, the fire, against this land, Israel, and bring upon all the, oh, I hate that word, curses. That are written in this book. For one chapter, Deuteronomy 28, and the rest of the things that we write about. Deuteronomy wasn't, 28 wasn't bad enough. What about the disease at Miriam? Leviticus 13 and 14. What about leprosy that God would give you? That's bad enough. No, Deuteronomy 28. And the Lord rooted them out of their land in anger. Jeremiah's time. Israel, north, goes in captivity by Assyria. Reuben, Gadites, Manasseh, the half tribe, they go into captivity before all Israel goes to captivity. And bring upon all the curses that are written in this book. The Lord ruled them out of their land in anger. <laughs> Did you get that? And in wrath, not just anger, wrath. And in great indignation. God, your love. God is love. Yeah, but also, he's angry, God, at the sin and the sinner. Imagine God, you know, when people say, now let's listen to this for a minute. God hates the sin, he loves the sinner. All right, here we are. Israel's going to go into idolatry. We know that. Now, wouldn't it be great if God, in his anger, I hate idolatry. Get idolatry out of the land, but I love them sinners. And if he got rid of the idolatry, then they wouldn't be sinners no more. Right? If he loved them. And to say that God hates the sin and loves the sinner, then why were they carried away captive to Babylon? Why are the Jews all over the world right now? Because he hates the sin and the sinner. When they will not adhere to the word of God. And God will tell this Jew, don't do it. They've done it. God will tell the Jew, get back to me. Repent. They won't do it. John 3, 16, I love the world at Calvary. If you don't want to do what I'm telling you to do, I'm done with the love, but you have the opportunity to repent and get right with me. And all they're doing is they're putting wallpaper in hell to make it look prettier. And cast them into another land, Babylon, all over the world, as it is this day, Nineveh. The secret things. Belong unto the Lord our God. I mean, secret sisters, secret gifts. But those things which are revealed belong unto us and to our children forever. That we do all the words of this law. And what verse 29 is saying, we don't have no idea what's going on. And what God is telling them, you're going into idolatry, people. We can't see that. They were in idolatry at the close of the book of Joshua. Joshua said, put away all your idols. Oh, we'll serve the Lord God. And they never put them away. Now, with the time we've got here, let's go to 2 Kings 21. And we're going to see Deuteronomy 28 played out. 2 Kings 21. It will be played out. <laughs> In 2 Kings 21, verse 8. Well, this 21 1. Let's go 21 1. Let's watch Manasseh, the longest reigning king in Judah. Let's watch him light that fire of that fuse that will begin to burn. Deuteronomy 28. Manasseh was 12 years old when he began to reign, and he reigned 50 and 5 years in Jerusalem, the longest reigning king. And his mother's name was Hesephah. And he did that which was evil in the sight of the Lord. After the abominations of the heathen, the strangers, the nations, whom the Lord cast out before the children of Israel. 
And he built up again the high places which Hezekiah, his father, had destroyed. Hezekiah cleaned the whole land of Israel out. Manasseh brings it all back. And reared up altars for Baal. Uh-oh. Prayer altar, I guess. Come on up to the altar. And, and made a grove. As did Ahab, the king of Israel. And worship all the hosts of heaven. He checked his horoscope. Worship the stars. Leo and all the stars up there. And served them. <laughs> That's kind of interesting. He served the stars. He built altars in the house of the Lord. Here is the temple that Solomon made. It's dedicated. It is the place where God said, my name is there. And Manasseh walks in there and brings a Christmas tree at the side of the pulpit. He's got the children outside searching for eggs. For Ishtar. Have I brought the Bible up to date for enough for you? In the house of God, he brings an altar that does not need to be there. Which the Lord said, in Jerusalem, will I put my name. That's the temple. With an altar that does not belong to be there. And that's today's churches. There are things in today's churches that don't need to belong there. And they belong to Satan. But it's okay. It's a tradition. Don't tell us what we're doing wrong. He made his sons pass through the fire. Ooh. Murdered his children. And observed times. Open up the newspaper, got the daily horoscope. Oh, can't do that today. All right. And use enchantments. Christian magician acts for the children. And dwelt with familiar spirits. Oh, you're going to go to this movie about this this witch and spirits and, and wizards? He wrought much wickedness. Did you get that word? Wickedness. In the sight of the Lord to provoke him to anger. That angers God. And churches are doing it. And being pleased that thinks God is so happy with them. And he set a graven image of the grove that he had made in the house he makes a grove oh i love that grove that grove is anti-bible it's against god he says i'll make an image of that grove and i'll bring it into the house of the lord <laughs> he's got two groves he's got the actual grove and he made a picture of it <laughs> of which the lord said to david and to Solomon his son in this house the temple and in jerusalem which I have chosen out of the tribes of Israel, will I put my name forever. Neither will I make the feet of Israel move anymore out of the land, which I gave their fathers. All right. God said, listen, I'll not plant you out. I will not move you out of Israel. You are settled. That's what God told David and Solomon. But only, only, here we go. Here's Deuteronomy 28. If they will observe to do according to all that I have commanded. Sound familiar? And according to the to all the law that my servant Moses, does that sound familiar? Commanded them. But they hearkened not, and Manasseh seduced them. Oh, oh. That's that guy that Peter was dealing with in the book of Acts. I forget his name. Don't need to know his name. More evil, more evil than did the nations. Oh, man. This king, our modern church movement today, is doing even worse than vile than all the nations that are vile and wicked. What about the heathen? Oh, never mind. What's going on in your church service? Whom the Lord destroyed before the children of Israel. And the Lord spake unto his servants, the prophets. God sends prophets. God sent preachers. Because Manasseh, king of Judah, had done these abominations. And has done wickedly above all that the Amorites did. Oh, that's wicked. Which were before him. 
and has made Judah also to sin with his idols. So he's got the congregation doing it too. And I apologize for my whistling. I got my new dentures and you got a whistle there. So he's making the nation of Israel sin as he is sinning. As the pastors make their congregation sin as they sin. Therefore thus saith the Lord God of Israel. Behold I am bringing such evil upon Jerusalem. Deuteronomy 28. And Judah evil is a consequence of sin. That whosoever heareth of it. Both his ears shall tingle. And Paul says to the church, they will seek to them men to have itchy ears. Isn't that an interesting cross-reference? I will stretch over Jerusalem, the line of Samaria, that is the capital north, Israel, and the plummet of the house of Ahab. That man was wicked. That man had Jezebel to wife. And I will wipe Jerusalem as a man wipeth a dish Wiping it and turning it upside down. I will forsake the raiment of my inheritance and deliver them into the land of their enemies. And they shall become prey and a spoil to all their enemies. Deuteronomy 28. Because they have done that which is evil in my sight and have provoked, provoked me to anger. Since the day their fathers came out of Egypt. That's what Moses is talking to in, in Deuteronomy. Even unto this day. Moral Manasseh shed innocent blood very much. Till he had filled Jerusalem from one end to another. Besides his sin where he made Judah to sin. And doing that which was evil. In the sight of the Lord. Now look at that. God didn't love that. Now, Manasseh is going to get right. He's going to repent and get right. But the bomb has started to burn. Chapter 22, verse 15. Because Manasseh gets right. It's not going to stop. 2 Kings 22, verse 15. And she said unto him, what happened is, Hezekiah... Uh, wait a minute, Hezekiah. Hezekiah. Hilkiah. 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 Yeah, Hilkiah. Sorry. Hilkiah has gotten right with God. He's doing right. He's cleaned the temple. They're rebuilding the temple, and they find a book of the law. And he seeks, say, "Listen, somebody's got to, somebody's got to read this book and tell me what's happened." And they got a woman. They can only find a woman. Verse fourteen. And she sends word back to the king, thus saith the Lord God of Israel, tell the man, the king, that sent you to me. Thus saith the Lord, here's the message, behold, I will bring evil upon this place, and upon the inhabitants thereof, even all the words of the book which the king of Judah has read. I'm going to assume that that book that he's got is Deuteronomy. I have no proof. But if you're going to read 15 to 20, you're going to think also, Scripture with Scripture, Deuteronomy 28. If not the entire book of Deuteronomy. Because they have forsaken me and have burned incense unto other gods that they may provoke me to anger with all the works of their hands. Therefore my wrath shall be kindled against this place and shall not be quenched. Remember about fire we read about the other night? Now here's a king that's doing right. But to the king of Judah, which sent you to inquire of the Lord. Here we are now. Thus shall ye say to him, Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, As touching the words which thou hast heard. The book he has been read to him. And he seeks out, hey, what does his book say? Hilkiah is the high priest, Josiah, yeah. Josiah, the, I was looking at Manasseh is Josiah. 
Josiah the king wants to get right. He's doing right. They, and Hilkiah goes into the temple. He finds the book of the law, and he brings it to the king. It is read to the king. And this is what the prophet, the prophet is, brings back to, in verse 19, because thy heart was tender. You want a revival? Thou hast humbled thyself before the Lord. You want a revival? When thou heardest what I spank against this place, found in the book of the law, and against the inhabitants thereof, you mean the sinners that God loves, <laughs> that they should become desolation. And what's that next word? And a curse. Where'd you find that? <laughs> and has rent thy clothes. This is the king. He's repentant. His heart is tender. He wants to get right. And wept before me. When you inquire of a man in church and say that that is Esther, and he responds back, every day is a sinning day. You're not going to reap. You're not going to get right with God. You're not going to get a revival. Wept before me, I also have heard thee say, the Lord. He's praying. He's speaking to God. Behold, therefore, I will gather thee unto thy father's death, and thou shalt be gathered unto the grave in peace. Thy eyes shall not see all the evil which I will bring upon this place. And they brought the king word again. God said, okay, there will be times that I will put my wrath off for a minute, but that bomb was, writ, was lit by Manasseh. And eventually, when Jeremiah's time, it's going to blow up. And you say, how and why? Because of Deuteronomy, what we read so far. And what people in the church age don't realize is when you study and read the Bible, our church is doing so great and everything's so wonderful in our church. God bless our church. And God says in Revelation, you're vile, you're wicked, you've got too much pride, you have everything but me, and you make me sick. Prideful. 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 